So today is the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the story of the Battle of Lepanto, uh, a crucial battle for Europe. It's kind of one of those key strategic points uh, that if we had lost, all of Europe could, have, could find itself have, have, having had a very, very different history uh, over the last uh, 500 years. So the Turks were moving across eastward and they had a very experienced fleet uh, of ships. They were, uh, they, had, they had only suffered ever one defeat, so they were fairly confident as well. And they, they had been claiming back, well, they had been fighting for and gaining territory uh, for centuries uh, from Turkey across the Holy Land and so on. Uh, and so they were also, whenever they would come across a Christian city, the Christians became their slaves. So the Turkish naval vessels, they were powered by rowers of, of Christian slaves, which then obviously leads to this kind of moral dilemma when you're fighting against them, it's actually your own people inside who are powering the vessel. So anyway, very, not a horrible situation to find yourself in. So they were in Lepanto with the idea of taking Italy. If that had happened, if they had managed to, to take Italy, they would have had a stronghold uh, in Europe that would have been very difficult to, to uproot. Now just imagine like if Italy into Austria, into Germany, southern France had become Muslim. You can imagine how, how radically different our history would be. Now obviously we're here in Ireland, we're off on the edge of the world really. Uh, but if, if continental Europe had turned Muslim, you all could find yourselves wearing a burqa right now. Well, you wouldn't be in here, but <laughs> like, you know, it would be just a very radically different history. So this, while our, our Christian faith starts in the Holy Land, very quickly it moves to Rome and then the, the, the center, the, 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 the nest, if you will, uh, of our faith becomes the Roman, the Roman Empire. That's how it spreads so quickly, quickly throughout Europe. So even though, as I say, it started in the Holy Land, uh, it really spreads from, from Rome out. Now, if you lose the center then of, of, of Christian culture, uh, how on earth, does, what, what would have happened? It's, it, it, it's very, very difficult to imagine. So what happens? The Pope, Pope Pius V, sees this great danger, knowing that if this strategic battle is lost, uh, all of Europe could indeed become Muslim. And so he calls people to prayer, but not specific, not just kind of uh, generic prayer, but he calls people to the prayer of the rosary. Michael Pius V declares that this to, to, to all the people as, as, as quickly as he can, pray the rosary, pray the rosary for the protection of Europe, pray the rosary for this victory. Uh, the Turkish fleet, as I say, well experienced, powered by Christian slaves, a Christian fleet was put together, but it was a, it was a ragtag bunch of ships. It wasn't, they weren't a, an organized naval force. Uh, so it was, uh, the chances of survival, not, not only that, they were way outnumbered. So there were about 500 vessels in all uh, fighting and, and the, the, a, a tiny minority were ours. So Don Juan was a, a, a Spaniard, uh, apparently part Austrian. And uh, so the, 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 the battle starts, and you can imagine like oh, these Christians, the, the fate of Europe hangs in their hands. It hangs in the balance. They were more or less men of faith, Don Juan himself was, and they prayed for the victory. They prayed to God for victory, for the protection of their, their homes, their families, their culture. And at the decisive moment in the battle, the wind turned in their favor giving them a great advantage over the Turks and they were able to defeat them, having been greatly outnumbered and protect Europe, protect yeah, all that we know and love. The power of the rosary. The power of the rosary is, I think, greatly underestimated. I think there's a great danger today that we can see it as excessively pious, as kind of, you know, old school, old fashioned, kind of a granny's prayer. Uh, in secondary school, I remember once I mentioned the rosary and they looked a bit confused. Uh, 
And I said, you know, the, like the, the dec- have you ever heard of the Decade of the Rosary? And one girl said, oh yeah, that's the, that's the funeral prayer. Because the only place they'd heard a Decade of the Rosary prayer is at a funeral, you know, when after the, 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 the casket or the coffin is, is, is laid down. Uh, there's the, the Decade of the Rosary at the end. That's the only place she'd heard it. So it's like the dead prayer. And w- the, the, I, I've seen it as well at different meetings where... Um, we might have lost a sense of the value of what's called formal prayer, so prayers where the, the text is prescribed, the t- text is given to you, in favour of only informal prayer. So I've seen this at different, as I say, different, different meetings where uh, we, we have to start with a prayer, and it's like if you start with a Hail Mary, it's like, oh, he could only start with a Hail Mary, as opposed to inventing a prayer yourself, coming up with all these you know, amazing words and stuff. Um, and the, uh, devaluing the, the power of, of the rosary or, as I say, formal prayer. And we lose something. If, if we don't understand the, the, the power of, of the rosary, we lose a, a, a great weapon from our arsenal. We can go to Mass, and thank God we can go to Mass here every day. Obviously, those watching our live stream, especially here in Ireland, aren't quite as blessed uh, at the moment. It's, it's difficult to find Mass. Um, or to receive Holy Communion. Adoration as well, I'm sure it, it's still ongoing in places, uh, but not as easy to find now as before. But the Rosary, you can pray always and everywhere. Now, I'm not saying by that it's objectively better or more powerful, obviously not, in, obviously not. But what I'm saying is you don't require anything to do it. You can pray it in bed, in the shower, driving, cooking, peeling spuds, cutting grass, turning hay. You can pray the Rosary, whereas you can't go to Mass and do all those things. You know, so you can bring prayer with you. You can bring the rosary with you, no matter where you are. It's com- it's entirely portable, which should suit our modern, technologically filled minds. Right? It's portable. It's a portable prayer. So you know, you can bring it everywhere, uh, and it's always fully charged. Hoorah! So, um, but the the rosary itself. Uh, I remember a priest explaining it once, and I thought it was a beautiful explanation. He said, "The rosary is like sitting on Our Lady's lap, looking through a picture book." of Jesus' life, right? So, the, like, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the, the, the joy of John the Baptist and uh, Elizabeth, and uh, the birth of Jesus, you know, the presentation to finding in the temple, all Christ-centered, the, the sorrowful mysteries, the agony in the garden, scourging at the pillar, crowning with thorns, carrying of the cross, crucifixion, all Christ-centered, you know? So, uh, the, the, the rosary, it's, it's, we're, we're looking with Our Lady at the life of Christ, and even the, you know, the glorious mysteries where Our Lady is assumed into heaven and crowned, we don't have to see these as, 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 as contrary. Uh, if the Lord has a real this through the action of the Holy Spirit in the church, who am I to argue? I think a fundamental problem with the rosary for some people is the idea of, of intercession. And this definitely has been attacked by... Uh, Kind of well, Protestant theology will say that intercession of saints doesn't exist, so that's going to be a problem. And often, then to kind of appease that or to to row in with that, we've thrown out the idea of intercession, the intercession of saints, as Catholics. So you know, we pray while here, but we don't we don't want to be praying to saints or or asking our, for our, our Lady's assistance. Now, okay, a couple of things we have to note here, just to be careful of. Um, it's better to say that we pray through saints as opposed to praying to saints. It's like, you know, God's here, but I'm going to pray to St. Anthony instead. No, it's that, you know, you can ask St. Anthony's intercession, but where is the prayer to St. Anthony going? He's asking God, right? The source is unique. So there's no opposition or competition between God and St. Anthony, <laughs> all right? Or Padre Pio, or whoever else, or St. Teresa of Lisieux, whatever it may be, okay? The source is unique. We, as, as Catholics, have to be very careful not to say something stupid, right, in front of, you know, Protestants might say, oh, you pray to saints, yeah, and you say, yeah, but so what? <laughs> no, we don't. You see, we pray through saints. It's always to God, right? Uh, it's, the prayer is aimed at God, okay? The, the goal is the same. So, no, 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 we, but we're asking for the intercession of a saint. So just be careful. Don't say something that actually that isn't what we believe, and then you just leave yourself wide open to ridicule. Okay, so we pray through saints to God. Okay, now, just very, very briefly, 
How can we justify that? How can we justify praying through saints to God? Well, there are just two passages uh, that I was just checking this morning to make sure I had them right, uh, which I think are very, very important for us to keep in mind. There's one in the book of Revelation, right? So it's Revelation 8, 4, 8, 4, where it says, the prayers of the saints ascend before God. The prayers of the saints ascend before God. Okay, so there are saints, those in heaven, who are praying before God. Their prayers ascend, you know? They're, well, their prayers for who, though? Because they're not praying for themselves because they're fairly okay. Uh, so who are they praying for? It's, it's us. There's only two options. Souls in purgatory or us. Souls in hell kind of stuff as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's us or our purgatory. So, or both. <laughs> okay, so the prayers of the saints in heaven arise before God. The intercession of saints. And then who greater than our blessed lady? Perfectly united to Jesus. Perfectly united to God who had never sinned. So, of course, her, like she's you know, the queen of heaven. And this, like, from the very first centuries of the church, Our Lady's role, Our Lady's position was recognized as different to other saints. Our Lady isn't just a saint, you know? She's the queen of the saints. There's, there's something particular about her. Like we said before, uh, two weeks ago, we were talking about, um, in theology, the difference between dulia, uh, so reverence due to saints, hyperdulia due to our ladies that's hyper reverence right super reverence so a greater degree of reverence and then uh, adoration due to god latria so dulea hyperdulia and latria so again if we're talking to people who, who don't necessarily understand saints our lady and god and there's, there's obviously there's a competition between them there isn't so we have to be clear in our own heads how how we understand how it all works okay now obviously there's that one other one other passage which is very very useful to know and that's in the book of maccabees where maccabeus where he sees uh, a vision effectively of onias who had died 400 years earlier in heaven praying for him so he's praying for like uh, the, the the whole family are, are suffering greatly or are about to be so are about to be martyred um, in, in defending the, the Jewish faith. So he saw Onias, the former high priest, a noble and good man, modest in bearing, distinguished in speech. He was praying with arms outstretched for the whole Jewish community. So this man had died, he's in heaven, or like a, a four heaven, or yeah, we won't get lost in that. Uh, Sheol, or okay, he's in a, he's not on earth. <laughs> because he has died, so uh, he's there praying for us, but praying for the living, interceding for those who are here on earth, okay? Second Maccabees uh, 15, Second Maccabees 15. So the intercession of saints is real. The intercession of saints is powerful. And then who greater, who can do this more effectively than Our Lady? Uh, Franciscan, many Franciscans, I'm not sure if all of them. Dominicans wear rosary beads. Correct me if I'm wrong, the rosary bead I think is worn on the left hand side, am I right? I think it is. The reason for that is most soldiers were right handed, so you go shing, that was how it worked. You pulled out your weapon from the opposite side. You don't, sorry, just a second. Just a... <laughs> That's really awkward, okay? So you pull it out from the opposite side, it looks cooler. <laughs> so, that, so you leave the, you know, your weapon, your weapon was on the opposite side to your good hand. And, and that's how it works. So the rosary beads is there. It was considered their, their weapon. Padre Pio used to often call his rosary beads, his weapon is the story told of, uh, uh, he says to one of his uh, Capuchin friars, he says, get me, my, get me my weapon, get me my weapon. They said, oh, Padre Pio, you, you don't have a weapon. <laughs> You're a Capuchin. And he says, oh, get me my weapon. He says, what am I looking for, a slingshot here or something? <laughs> so now get me my rosaries, get me my rosaries. You know, he, he who was so aware like, of the spiritual battle and often, often was, actually, was often actually engaged in it himself, called the rosary his weapon. Okay? And I don't believe it's any different today. We need to use our spiritual arsenal because we are engaged in a spiritual battle and the forces, the people, the, the enemy that we're fighting isn't an enemy of flesh and blood. 
whereas the powers and principalities were fighting against the forces of evil, the forces of darkness. And it's pretty dark out there. So this isn't a time now to be trying kind of uh, new spiritualities that may or may not work. Let's use what God has given us. All right? God has given us the gift of the rosary. He has given us the gift of mass, given us the gift of adoration, given us the gift of the Divine Mercy Chaplet, Consecration of Our Lady, all these various forms of, of, of weaponry that we have. Let's use it. Let's get stuck in. Like we, we've, got, we've got to be praying, and, and we should never devalue the rosary. It's like, as I say, tried and tested and proven by the saints throughout the centuries that this works. So this is not a time for experimentation. We can't, we can't afford experiments now, especially if we're not being, if this experimentation isn't being inspired by the spirit, if it's being inspired by a spirit of modernity, right, then that's, that's bound to fail, deserves to fail. So let's get back to basics. We meditate the life of Christ through the eyes of Our Lady. We pray through her to God. We're asking for her intercession, for her protection, for her guidance. And where is she going to guide us? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Anything we give to her goes to God. Anything we ask of her, she brings it to God. Like there's, there's no competition. There's no, we don't need to have any fear praying through Our Lady or asking for her intercession or her help. She goes straight to the heart of her son. We think of Cana. They have no more wine, right? And Jesus is like this. My time has not come yet. And she doesn't have to try and convince him or twist his arm or anything. She just says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And then Jesus, in his human nature, and his human heart, well, if mom asks, <laughs> right? And he works the miracle. Wasn't his time, but he works the miracle. Our Lady's intercession is real. It's scriptural. If a person has a problem with that, I don't know. I don't know where you start then. Like, it's in the Bible. Okay, right? It's in the Bible. So... Her intercession is real, so, and that, that continues today, even more so now that she's in heaven, seated at the Lord's right hand. So we pray for her intercession today. We pray for a renewal of Marian devotion. We pray for a renewal of love and zeal and enthusiasm uh, for, for, for the Lord and for the, the weapons that he has given us, and that we will believe in their efficacy, their effectiveness, their power, that we will believe in that even in their simplicity, that before God they work. Lord, we pray for a rediscovery of the power of the rosary. That we too, like Pius V, like Don Juan, might become your soldiers, praying not with arms of steel, but with our rosary beads and with faith. Amen.